and give me just a moment here. Popping out the chat. And skadoosh. Good evening. And yes, we're here for another show. This time, it's a Patreon sculpt. <clears throat> for an axolotl humanoid with an atlatl spear checker. Really don't want to take it easy on me, do they? No, they don't. And I just heard a thump. I'm probably going to have a visitor in here in just a moment, just a four-footed visitor. And yeah, you see his ears down there, don't you? What do you need, Fuzzbutt? Oh, besides climbing up on my shoulder. Yeah. Gee, what a shock, huh? So, anyway. <clears throat> Fuzzbutt. Because this is such an a strange shape for a for a figure. I'm probably going to end up having to do this in two sessions. Said axolotl humanoid is a ranger. He won't fill in any slots on my little list of uh, race of class, but hey, you never know. So what it's basically going to turn into, first of all, because if you're watching now, you're watching after the fact, please don't forget, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Make a comment over here if you really want to, if you've got some questions you want to know, and if you haven't, you know, don't forget, I've got over 230 videos backlogged way back over there. Yeah. <clears throat> Meanwhile, let me go ahead and uh, make sure a patron knows I'm live. And, uh, yeah. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to split this one into two different uh, broadcasts. The first one is also going to double as How Do I? For three different things. The first one, how do I make the facial shapes and the braces and, <clears throat> and hello again. Ever notice that when he gets up here, everything else washes out because he's so dark? Yeah. Anyway, I'm putting you back on the floor for a ball. Next week, or not next week, next week and the week after our pre-scheduled patron sculpts for other people. But the next slot we have for the axolotl without a ladle, we are going to finish and actually use what we're making tonight to make the actual character. So tonight is going to be me showing how to make a... Uh, a dial that actually changes proportions and also morphs the facial features in Daz Studio, making a basic prop in this case, or an articulated prop, in this case, the axolotl, and making a conforming tail. Because atolotls don't have the same kind of tail that lizards do and that sort of thing. It's got more of an eel-like tail. <clears throat> so, now what we're doing is we're just waiting on our uh, patron to show up. And uh, while we're doing that, I'm going to get a sip of soda. And, um, now, uh -huh. 
what will very likely happen. Not guaranteed, just very likely. Is the feet will become flippers. The hands will be partially webbed. But that webbing really won't print well unless it's actually holding something. And really, since their hands are going to be like this anyway, it's not going to matter. They might have only fingers. I'd have to Google image search an axolotl just to make sure I'm doing this properly. So images.google.com axolotl. And what we see is a big wide head, four toes, so it's going to lose its pinky. Um, and yeah, it's got that eel-like tail that instead of being kind of rounded at the end, it kind of comes down to a point. And they've got short, tiny arms and legs and a long torso. And of course, the famous frills. It's got three frills. It's also got a small lipless mouth and two little round eyes with barely any sign of a eye socket. Okay, so, still waiting on the uh, patron. Okay, he said he'll be here very soon. Well, one of the things I started working on was I went ahead and started painting a version of the Minotaur from my Epic Enemies. Yep, this sucker right here. Now, right now, the only thing that's painted is the base with its fallen leaves and its big old uh, bushes and a couple stumps and the skin, and the skin isn't even finished. The skin is basically mostly shaded, but it's not tinted. This thing's skin needs to really have some tint to bring it some character, because this pale, sandy brown just isn't cutting it. And as some of you know, I also, uh, I also painted a polar bear cub. A polar bear, polar owl bear cub. Oh, bubbo. The other thing is, I've gotten started on another painting competition. This one, you have until the 30th to pick up your uh, miniature, and then from that point, two weeks, which means right now, I have three weeks. I'm taking daggone advantage of that. I've got already printed. All right, we drew random Reaper Bones figures. And what I drew, he's still unassembled because I haven't primed him yet, was the Dracolisk. Six legs, wings, and a really toothy grin. You can kind of barely make it out there. <laughs> but an unusual base. Now, I made a swamp with a cutout for that base. How did I do it? I took a picture of the base as perfect parallel as I could. I then took my calipers and measured length and width, added half a millimeter because FDM. And it fits in so perfectly. Mm-hmm. Which means when it comes time after he's painted and the base is ready, he will fit in so perfectly I won't have very much gap fill to do. Just a little bit, right around the edge.
The other thing I've done is I've taken some of my older figures, or not so much older as more some of my first figures from the the new figure geometry, and used procedural methods to uh, turn them into broken statues. May not, it may not be easy to see under this light, but there's also cracks all over it. Places where it's you know where it's got occlusion, that sort of thing, and have a couple broken statues around the around the uh, Dracolisk because Dracolisk petrify things. Oh, and uh, one casualty under its claw. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you make a granite for something like that? Well, I'm going to prime them a warm gray. Not a cold gray, a warm gray. You then take... Whoops. Where is it? There it is. Sorry, I'm trying to not stumble all over my tools. Take one of these. Dab the one that you're not going to use to brush your teeth with. This one I use for cleaning prints, so it's it's had time for the alcohol to dry. But tap the tip into a droplet or two of black paint, and just do that. It'll flick little droplets. Then you clean out, clean it off, let it dry, and do the same thing with a little bit of white paint. So it's covered in black and white dot, uh, uh, droplets. This will not only give it a nice base color, it'll also give it a nice texture. <coughs> then after that, just, you know, coat of Nelm oil for getting into the crevices and the cracks and bringing them out. And then a dry brush of, of not quite white, you know. something kind of like this gray sand. It's not quite white, but it's almost. Although, to be exact, this won't do well because it's one of Viejo's mecha colors, which means it's thinned down for, dry for airbrushing. Not so good for dry brushing. I also noticed, right down here, I'm at 740 subscribers now. 10 away from 750. And yet I can't get more than 20 or 30 viewers on a typical video. Yeah. So, while we are still waiting on our uh, patron. I guess... Uh, Mm -hmm. Not sure what we're going to do while we're waiting. Already gone over the current projects. Oh, yeah. My Kickstarter went live. Hello, Patrick. My Kickstarter went live a day and a half or two and a half days ago. Tomorrow at about three will be the end of day three. And just to check at this point in time, I'm at 1,373 out of 1,500. Something tells me I might just make it, you know, just a, just a little, little bit of an idea. Are you who I think you are, Patrick? Because uh, the name is like, what? Eh? I don't remember names very well. All right. Well, now that you're here, we can start work on... Uh, 
getting your little buddy ready. And for that, Dev Studio. I've already got the basic figure loaded in. Now, we don't need to worry about the surface or anything. We're going to be working entirely in the scene. One of the things we've got to do, go to parameters, mesh resolution, base. Okay? Now, how much axolotl do you want in your axolotl person? Is he just an axolotl standing up on his hind legs? Or is he mostly human with an axolotl-like head and three-fingered hands? Okay, so mostly, all right, there's axolotl, 50%, mostly human. How, how much human do you want it? 50% would get you something. Well, let's put it this way. Turtles are 50% turtle humanoids. Most lizard folk are portrayed as 50% reptile humanoids. Although skinks are closer to 40%. Um, the ninja turtles are actually closer to 70% humanoid. Okay, then one thing that we need to do is we need to change his proportions. And what we're going to do, we're going to expand from selected. And then over here, we're going to click on all so that we can select multiple body parts and affect them all at the same time. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab those thighs and shins and make them shorter. Y scale. And then from here, we need to make them a little bit smaller overall, so just regular scale. Drop. And make them a little bit shorter, just to get the impression, the super impression of long, uh, of short legs. Then, we take the abdomen and chest and hip. The right collar and the left collar. And we Y scale up. At that point, we can stop dealing with the chest and only do the hip and abdomen. Okay, now the next thing is, we take the chest, collars, shoulders, and forearms. And we're going to X scale down. Just enough to give it a more humanoid. And then we're going to undo the, unselect the chest and collars. And we're going to uh, make them a little bit thinner. Just a little bit. So that they retain their posability. Okay. Then, we're going to select the hand. And we're going to select the pinky. Of both hands. And we're going to change their scale to 0.01% because axolotls have three fingers. We're going to select all of the other fingers. Deselect the. Ah, no. Mare. Air. 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 and make them wider. So that they'll better fit a hand. Okay. We're gonna keep the human-like feet just because, although we are probably gonna end up blending out the toes. Now, the head and everything subservient to it. Expand from selected, okay. Head through jaw. Needs to be very wide. And a little 
out like that. We're gonna fix it all here in a little bit, and maybe a little bit. There we go. That is the basic proportion for our axolotl. This could also be used as a basic proportion with a much smaller head for a weasel, but that's beside the point. Now, we are going to File, Export. We are going back to, all right, Storage, yeah, 3D printing home, meshes, new uh, new base figure, Patreon, new folder, Axel. Axolotl. Axolotl. And save this as Axolotl. Okay, now edit figure zero figure or no restore figure. Okay, now we go to ZBrush. We import new base figure, Patreon, axlotl, axlotl.obj. Load it in. Turn on edit, and this changes to gray to make it easier. Now the thing is, unlike most other, actually, no, we forgot something. We forgot to make the neck wider. Okay, now, file, export, axolotl2, accept, and import axolotl2. Now, we are not going to be subdividing, we are not going to be dynameshing, we are not going to be z-remeshing. The reason is, it needs to keep the same vertexes in the same order to properly morph. Now, we are going to be pulling out the tablet. One thing about the axolotl is that its frills and its tail are going to be separate. Now, We're going to reduce the strength of smoothing because this is a much lower poly. And we're going to smooth out where the neck meets the chest because we want that to be smooth. We're going to be doing a lot of smoothing on this particular character. And I just realized I forgot to do one important thing. This is symmetrical. We need to do it with symmetry on. So it does both sides at the same time. We're also going to smooth out the belly a bit, but and the pectorals just a bit. We're not going to do anything to the right, we're lower the lats, and we're going to switch to inflate over here we're going to reduce it quite a bit and we're going to just kind of inflate the sides try and bring it down so when he's from the front he's pretty much yeah and then just a little bit of smooth in there frame out. The axolotl body is pretty much mostly done. We've got to fix some things over here with, with the hands. Primarily, <clears throat> zoom this in and we're going to increase the intensity because we're 
smoothing away the pinky. We're also going to kind of smooth out there and the clay build up this kind of build it back up. That's really something I should do as a thick morph to the figure in general. Shrink this and smooth out that. And by using smooth, we're getting rid of some of these details we don't need, like the pinky. Zooming in a little bit more. Draw a size of one. It's about the best we can do here. Frame out. Okay. Now, as you can see, it still didn't come out quite right. So what we need to do is we need to kind of just brush this away slightly and then just build up here. And decrease the intensity of the smoothing again for what we're going to need to do next. And we're going to There we go. That's pretty good. Let's uh, smooth out the thumb. And right there. Okay, we're going to zoom out. And now we need to get rid of the ears, the brows, the nose, and the highly visible cheekbones, as well as the bump on the back of the head, which we're going to do by smoothing. going to shrink the mouse again and smooth out this super high because we don't want any hint of an actual ear here until it comes time to add the tiny little ear holes which yes an axolotl does have I've looked Let's smooth this out Okay, now, make the mouse a bit bigger. One thing we can do real quick is we're gonna poly, we're gonna auto group, which means, let's select those. And we can now, With all due respect, he's going to end up looking like a like an earless Yoda. Now we're going to grab the move brush. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and click that button there, which lets us remember brush sizes by individual brush. We're going to kind of pull out. Uh, all 
I know axolotls have tiny eyes, but for this miniature, we're going to make them a little bit bigger than they would be. And then we're going to grab the side of the mouth and kind of pull it back. And then pull up here, front. And then shrink the mouth a bit and pull it out to the side. Shrink it down again. Oh, wrong way. And smooth. Then we're going to shrink the mouse again, zoom in on the nose here, and smooth it out flat completely. Frame out. And except for the frills, it's looking pretty axolotly. How does that look to you? Again, the frills and the tail will be separate. Real quick, just to make sure I, I, I'm, I'm doing this right. Images.google.com Axolotl And they do not have a nose, okay. They do have tiny little ear holes, but only on the adult, <coughs> extremely opaque brown and yellow version. So, uh, Guess that means I'm just going to go ahead and leave it because, you know, stuff. You can paint it on if you want the more adult axolotl. Okay, so what we do now, we take this, we unmask everything. And we export as it is. Save. Yes, I want to replace it. We go back in to Daz Studio. <clears throat> we take our figure, file, I'm sorry, edit, figure, restore, figure. Make sure that we've got mesh resolution back at high. Okay. Now, over here, there's a picture of a muscle arm going, mm. You may not have the one with the P, you may have just this one. There is a problem with this, it's not as <coughs> useful as this one. And what we do, it says choose more faces. So we go back to Patreon, Axolotl, Axolotl 2. First thing we do is reverse deformations, yes. There's some alterations in here. Property group. Races. Delta tolerance. Zero, 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 one. Accept. Okay. Now we go to races. And there's our axolotl. Before we do anything, we're going to change the parameter setting. The minimum is going to be zero. We don't want to see what happens when you subtract axolotl from human. As it is. And as the time goes on, he gets more and more axolotly until BAM! So the dial is there. There's one problem. <clears throat> Let me make the bones visible. You can see the bones and where they are placed. It's like, you know, like the chest bone right there within the body. Now, when we go to the races, let me, if I do a dwarf, just to show one that's, that shrinks, watch the bones. The bones move in proportion to the, to the figure body. Right now, if I do the axolotl, the bones don't move, which means I take this bone and I move it. You can see it's pulling away. Or if I do this one, 
Matt, better if I twist this one, that's not good. So how do we solve this? Well, I'll show you. First, let me go ahead and open up the property hierarchy window. Now, what we do is we go to tool settings. Sorry. Edit, adjust rigging to shape. And adjust orientation, accept. And bam! Everything's in the right place now. So I can properly open and close the mouth. Control Z to undo that. However, if we return to human, the bones stay in the current state. So they'll stay here instead of where it is as a human. So what do we do? We go down to axolotl up here. Right click, ERC freeze. Restore figure, yes. Apply control property, yes. And restore figure rigging, yes. Oh, wait a minute. Scene, choose the main core figure. Property hierarchy. ERC freeze. And now it's got all these in here. And accept. Now, when I undo the axolotl morph, the bones restore to human proportions. Easily seen at the uh, hip area. I turn it off. File, save as, support asset, morph assets. It's the third one under support. Under product name, I put miniatures, because exclamation point miniatures. Properties, go to races, axolotl 2. Accept. And there. Now there is a permanent new race called Axolotl 2. That turns him into that. Now, we're going to go ahead and turn him back human because the next thing we need to do is we need to make his little fills. But before we do that, I'm going to get some soda. <clears throat> All right, let's see what happens if we go negative axolotl. That is negative axolotl. The massive finger and skinny, massive binky and skinny fingers, a flattened head. Humongous ears, tiny torso, and super long limbs. And yeah, that's scary. No more negative axolotl for me. <laughs> yeah, no more negative axolotl. Okay, so what we do now is we're now going over to 3D Studio Max. We're going to import from the axolotl, the axolotl to final shape. Skip. Close. And here we have our axolotl two, once again. We're going to give it a layer of mesh smoothing just so that it's, well, smooth. And I might be having 3ds Max crash. Don't worry, it does this occasionally. There we go. 
Okay, collapse all. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to plan out where our three little frills are going to come from. And we're going to make a box. And this box is going to have three vertical segments. Okay. So the first thing we do is we bring this box over here. Oh! Bring this box over here until it's barely visible. We're going to bring it up a little bit. And we're going to rotate it just a little bit this way. Then we're going to convert it to edible poly and we're going to apply a bend. No, nope, that's not the direction we want to go. That is, but we're going to bend it that way. Collapse all. We're then going to take the vertexes on this side. We're going to rotate them slightly, pull them back, grab these vertexes, pull them over. The reason for this is this will let us, wait a minute. All right, so now go here and we select here and we deselect this bottom polygon. We extrude by polygon and we shrink that distance now here's the thing here's the real killer okay we are not going to give him the points all the tiny little frills on these neck frills we are however going to go ahead and rotate him out a bit wider and probably make them a little bit bigger. You always want to push and exaggerate details when sculpting for printing. And that's actually in exactly the perfect place. Now, what we need to do, we're going to select all of these side edges from the extrusions. We're going to connect twice. We're going to bring them in closer Because we want to have a decent there okay then we're going to select these side we're going to ring we're going to connect one zero what that is for is that helps us create the structure we now mesh smooth and that's the basic structure of our fins. We can actually pull them out a little bit that way. And then we can actually hit push. Make them a little bit thicker. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And we can play around with their positioning. But a lot of that will end up being later on once it's actually on the figure. We're now going to move the pivot X of zero so that we can then mirror, create a copy. And then with that copy selected, we go over here to tools and reset transform. Now I want you to be careful because watch what happens when I do this. Okay, reset selected. Bam, it turned black. Because scaling negative is how they make a mirror, which means this is now inside out. So we need to hit normal, and that flips all the normals, and now it's, no now it's exactly what it says. It's normal. 
And there we have our axolotl frills. These will be t tweaked and played with and affected in the sculpt to make them more organic, to make them droop or flow based on the mood of the critter. So we're going to file, export selected, new base figure, Patreon, axolotl, wavefront obj, axolotl frills, export, done. And let's go ahead and um, make both of these kind of a pale yellow. Actually, make it more of a yellow yellow. And go to under display object color. Because we want it all to be looking like a cohesive critter. Now we open Daz Studio. We're going to go ahead, go back to scene. To close up the collars and the thighs just to make room. And we're going to turn on Axolotl 2. Then, File, Import, uh, New Base Fig, Patreon, Axolotl, Axolotl Frills. Accept. Now we're going to take those Axolotl Frills and we're going to parent them to the head by clicking and dragging them onto the head itself. Now if we click on the head and we bend it, it moves with the head. Okay, that's that. Now to save it, we're going back to our content library, file, save as, support asset, figure slash prop assets. And this is going in new mini video, props, new folder, racial, and axolotl frills. Once again, Valandar, product name, exclamation point, miniatures. This is to make sure they all stay in the same directory. Accept. And bam! Now when I go to props and racial, it's got the axolotl frills there. Even to the point of, now that I've got them in this axolotl form, I click on them and click axolotl frills and they load in already parented. Okay, so we're going to leave that there for now because the next step involves going back to Daz Studio. Uh, well, back to 3D Studio. We're gonna go here. We need to make his tail. And we're gonna make this tail slightly different. We're not gonna be entirely Geo from here. We're gonna start off with a cone Sides is going to be 12. Cap segments, 2. We're going to click here and make the outer big that big. Zoom, zoom out way far. About there, that'll do. And we're going to change this radius 2 to 0. We're then going to change cap segment uh, height segments to three. Edible poly. We're going to select all of the vertexes for this bottom third. We're going to condense them a little bit and then bring them up to have a slightly flatter underside it doesn't really but it makes things easier for in the future and we're going to grab just this top center we're going to bring it up slightly and then scale them that way it's ever so slightly a teardrop shape 
but we are going to select the whole thing and make it narrower. Then we're going to move the center x of 0. We're going to grab the, this and move it until you can see where the inside of the butt cleft is. We want this to be still within the butt cleft. Okay, then we're going to select these two sections here. We're going to make that one almost the size of the one at the base. We're going to deselect and then make this one Give, it, give that tail some meat. A little bit less here, but not a lot less. And then we're going to select both of these circles. Or not circles, but loops. Loop. We're going to chamfer. So that we have twice as many segments. Or three times. And then going to select here and here. We're going to connect one. And then the last thing we're going to do, we're going to select this last vertex here. And we're going to bring it in quite a bit. Now, this is just a tail. What we need to do next, we're going to select this edge and loop so that the outermost final edge we're going to sharpen by chamfering it at 0 0.001. That's never going to be seen on screen, but we need it sharp to make sure that this bottom edge keeps going and doesn't round up into the butthole and this edge doesn't round down. Then file, export, export selected, axolotl tail, export, done, and we delete it. Now ZBrush. Once again, we're leaving him here because we don't need to worry about him. We're going to geometry. We're going to divide it just to get a nice smoother look. Then import axolotl tail. Oh, sorry. Append or insert polymesh 3D import axolotl tail. And then from here, we're going to geometry and divide until it's really smooth. I mean, really smooth. but we're not keeping it there. We go to Dynamesh. We're going to Dynamesh it at 512. And then subdivide it again. And also X. Now, from here, we're going to hide the body. Yes, I say that way too often. back here. We're going to select here. Okay, why? Well, because I'm going to blur that mask a lot. Actually, come to think of it, We're going to keep it lower. We're going to delete the higher res because we want this to be moderately low poly. It's like about here. And this will make the, the blur go faster. And then we're going to grow it a bit. Let's see, where is he in relation? Okay, now we need to be a little bit closer for this to work. 
that should do it because their front the, the fin on their tail tends to start closer to the torso now Okay, we're gonna hide the body. Go to the back, and since we now have it mirrored, when I control Alt and deselect here, well, looky there. It's parallel. The center, where the frill is gonna, or the fin is gonna be, is selected. So I click once, and that inverts. Now. We're going to go to geometry, not geometry, uh, deformation. We're going to inflate. Then we're going to move and we're going to scale, move up and move back. Let's move it up a little bit more and scale it just a little bit more. Okay. Then, going back to draw, we're going up to polish. We're going to polish a little bit until it rounds off. Okay. Now we're going to move just for this now we got it on move we're gonna go to uh, standard so we can polish oh polish it a bit that's too hard polish it a bit here either way we have our basic let's go S polish. Okay. Now, frame out. We're going to export it again. Well, actually, no, before we do that, we're going to subdivide it. A bit lower. And we're going to hide the body. Oh, yay, there I go again. And we're going to turn on line fill. And under geometry, under Z remesher, we're going to go to half polygon count. It's actually going to start off by dropping it from six hundred something thousand to just a little over a hundred and some odd thousand, maybe a hundred and thirty. Okay, two hundred and sixty six. Not half again. Hundred and seventeen. Half again. We want to drop this to about thirty thousand. Maybe one more. Okay. There we go. We compare this to the existing sucker. It can go one more lower. Yeah, that's a bit closer to the size of the polygons in the hip area. Now, we're going to export this. Export, save, because it's already axolotl tail. Yes, we want to replace it. And our next step will be in 3D Studio Max. Basically, all we're going to do here, we're going to import the tail. 
and just see how it looks on a ge ge geometric version. And as you can see, it is nicely perfectly parallel down that center axis, which is all we wanted. Okay, we go back to Dad Studio. And now we file, import, Let's change this name to hit file export selected slottle tail. And the reason being is coming up. We go back to our uh, dev studio. We load in the axolotl tail. Except go away. I don't need an in-game HUD. That's covering up my control box. Okay, that's where our tail is. And what we're going to do here, the circle pointing to an empty circle. It's called the transfer utility. We're going to show options. We're going to select new male figure as the source and axolotl ta tail current, item shape current. That's important. Now, we are turning off face groups. Accept. Okay. And there we have our tail in place. Oh, no we don't. We can fix this. What we do is we now Tail create corrective accept accept okay now go to parameters and we Where did it go? No, oh, I see what. No, that's not that. Axolotl tail parameters. Yeah. That's why, because it's still called the same thing. Okay, so we open up our directories. This is what happens whenever you make anything conforming. And this is why I'm, I did not plan on being able to finish this figure. Axolotl. Axolotl tail. So we're going to call this axolotl fit. Okay. Now. Choose more targets. Axolotl fit. Okay, now adjustments, axolotl fit, and there it goes. That's where it's supposed to be. However, what we need to do now is we need to slave that. And by that, I mean we're going to property hierarchy, axolotl fit, controllers. Grab axolotl 2 and move it over here. Yay! Now, when we go to races, oh, seen his races, it moves with it moves with him. Yay! However, now we need to add in 
the rest of the bones. We're going to hide him. He looks kind of goofy, doesn't he? With the axolotl ears and the thing. Hide those. What we do now, axolotl tail, hip, weight maps, tool settings, X rotation. Weight editing, fill selected, or no, wait, wait, wait. Select all. Weight editing, fill selected 100%. Weight editing, fill selected 100%. Weight editing, fill selected 100%. Wait, editing fill selected 100%. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to add in our bones. I can put this up for a few. It's in my lap and it's getting a little annoying. And the way we do this is we go to the right view. We're still here. Selection type. All right, we need to go to regular geometry selection geometry selection clear selection actually no we start with the bones that's right and from the hip we create child bone internal name tail 01 and it's a Z Twist side to side bend, so Z, Y, X. Except, it's in the wrong spot. We need to move it to here and bring this. We want it to have about five bones, so I'm going to move it to there. Align node. Then we're going to create child bone. Tail. Zero two. Oh, delete bone. Where is it? Create child bone. Tail zero two. Zyx. Accept. And once again, we got to move this to there. Okay. Now. Align node. Edit. No, no, not. Okay, create child bone. Tail 03. ZYX. That means that it's going to twist around the Z axis, which, unlike 3D printing, is the in out axis. Side to side will be the Y axis, which is up and down, unlike 3D printing. And bending will be along the X axis which is same as 3D printing, except, and once again, we got to move this to just past the halfway point. Align node, create child bone, tail 04, ZYX, accept and move, move the end to about there. I'm going to lower it a little bit, actually. Align node, and then create child bone, tail 05, ZYX, accept, and move this to there. Align node. And thus we have our tail bones, tail 1 through 5. And what we need to do now is we need to select our polygons. Well, first thing we do is we go over here just to make sure we see where this ends. So we're going here and we're going to, well, selection mode, marquee selection. And end it about there. And then we're going to Geometry assignment, create face group, name, tail01. 
Accept. Geometry Visibility. Hide Selected Polygons. Now we go back to the bone and we see that tail 2 ends here. So, select. Geometry Assignment. Create Face Group from Selected. Tail 2 Accept. Visibility hide selected. Back to the bones. Here. Actually, let's go ahead and move it over to here. Here. Selection. Geometry assignment. Create group from assignment from selected. Tail 03. Accept. Visibility hide selected polygons. Okay, it ends there. Create face group from selected. Tail 04. Accept. And hide these suckers. And then geometry visibility. Show all polygons. Geometry assignment, and that's tail 05. Accept. And now we're going back to the maps. What we're going to do geometry selection, clear selection. <clears throat> so that needed. And now let's uh, frame out. Actually, no, we got to go back to bones. Okay, so for tail one, the selection group is tail one. And we do this for all five bones. Now, notice as we select them, it appears over here. So we don't even need to really do a lot of brain work here. Okay, now we go back there. And we go to Weight Editing, Fill by Bone Selection Groups. Oh, look. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go back to tail one. Geometry selection, select by face group, tail of one. Right, I made a mistake. Select by face groups, hip. Geometry assignment, assigned to face group, tail 01. Okay. Geometry section, clear selection. Weight editing, fill by bone selection groups. There we go. And that affects all the maps. Now what we do next, we need to make this blurry. Because right now, let's say I took tail 2 and I X-rotated it. It does that. We don't want that. We want it to be even and smooth. So back to tool settings. Weight editing, smooth selected, 100%. 100 times. Accept. It's going to be a while.
you can eat your squids. What's happening now is it's basically taking the assignment of those vertexes to the bone and blurring it where they meet so it has a smoother blend. There's a very good chance I may have gone overboard here, by the way, but we'll find out in about another five minutes. And hello, Wen. I just noticed you in here. Sorry, I'd, sorry I haven't said anything in the past 20 minutes. Go ahead and poke my head over here. Er, four people watching. Yay. <laughs> what I'm doing works for tentacles, tails, and boneless things, by the way. It does not work so well for hard things like elbow like elbows. With the elbow you need to precisely define what areas bend. And you need to precisely say, no, it bent doesn't bend from here up. No, the flesh doesn't move. Also, the back of the elbow doesn't bend as much as the front. You also need to say that the twist goes all the way up. And it's still going. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, I know why. Wait a minute. Ha <laughs> ha. Geometry selection. Select all. There we go. Wait at any smooth selected. We're going to start off with five times. And we're going to restrict influence. Restrict influence means it won't blur above the next bone in line. Except, okay, that took a lot. That was a lot faster than I expected. So we're going to, we're going to undo that. Weight editing, smooth selected, 25, except, there we go, that's good. Weight editing, smooth selected, except, boom. Weight editing, smooth selected, except, boom. And scale weights, weight editing, smooth selected, except, boom. Now what scale weights let you do is let you make it longer and still pose, or wider or thicker. All right, now, the next thing that we're gonna do, we're going back, we're gonna make the human visible again, and we're gonna bring him back down to being a uh, an axolotl. Now when we click on our axolotl and we go to bones, oh no, all the tail bones are up there. So we just simply do what we did before when we made the axolotl morph. Edit, adjust rigging to shape. Except, no, that did not work. So, we're gonna click here. We're gonna see that we need to lower this tube near the center of the bone. There, and there. There, and, whoop. There. There, and. There. There, and there. And then, there to there and then we go back to property hierarchy and on the axolotl tail we got axolotl 2 and erc freeze right. we got to oh we got to have the whole tail selected to do this and accept and now we're going back to scene or we're going to crash dad studio <clears throat> all the tail work's gone guys well the rigging of the tail is bye bye 
You saw what I was doing, though. You saw where I was going. It was literally one click and a save away from being done. So, um, Patrick, as the patron, do you mind if I just go ahead and do the Atl Atl next? I can always go back and remake the tail off screen before your next appearance. Okay. Bye bye, Dad Studio. We're going to have to load it up again in a second after we're done. Um, Alright, so we're going to go ahead and click. And we're actually going to delete the whole thing here because we need to base this on the human base because this might eventually be used by a human figure as well, not just a axolotl. So we're going to import base, the base human figure. Import. Close. Okay. Now, I'm going to real quick pop back up, or I'm going to stay here on this camera for a second as I'm going to go ahead and just Google image search and let's make sure I'm doing it the shape of the atlatl and spear properly. Okay, now just to let you know, an atlatl, there are many variants. The variant I'm going to do is a more stylized variant. Something more like what was actually used, not like a current modern Carbon Express atlatl kit. Um... Yeah, here we go. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go back to here. Loaded in the human figure. Now, the atlatl is held like that. It's not. It's not underheld. It's overheld. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a articulated figure of the atlatl and the spirit through, which was actually very similar to an arrow in that it was fletched. So it wasn't so much a spear as much as it was. A longer, thicker arrow. Um, but it's going to be attached to the atlatl so that as you, it, it can be different positions along the arc of a throw. So, the way we're going to start it is we're going to make a cylinder at about where the hand's going to be. An atlatl, from what I've seen, was about a little bit longer than forearm length. So, that's a bit too long for an atlatl. You know, canceling it, counting in uh, handle space. And it's not too much. It's not too long, but we're still going to shorten it a little bit. We're going to make sure to change the cap segments to two, and we're going to change height segments to one and the sides to ten. Okay. Now, here's our... We've, ow! I just knocked over crash bashed my ankle in the process all right so what we're going to do we're going to select these we're going to connect once and bring it down to about there where the handle would be we're then going to select these and connect again bring it up to about here 
and then chamfer it at much less than one about there then we're going to select those three and pull them up and pull this one back like that or those two back like that that is the hook of our atlatl so to speak okay now we're going to select that those two edges but deselect the one in the back and loop and remove we're then going to select the one right here loop and we're going to chamfer a good bit at two and then loop control click to make it selection of by vertexes and we're going to relax it just a little bit because we want to kind of basically round off the tip of the atlatl now traditionally there would be like an animal here we're going to select these edges we're going to connect by two and make them wider than the hand okay then we're going to select these polygons and extrude them out by local normal that's way too wide this is basically giving the ends of the handle And it'd be wider than the finger grip around it so that the spear would actually rest along those grips which does mean we now need to select these and bring them up a bit higher also yeah a little bit higher now we're going to select here 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 and these two plus this i'm going to deselect that and that because we want to and we're going to chamfer it 0 0.01 0 0 0.001 okay and we're going to select here connect only one segment but it's going to be all the way up here then we're going to select here and it's going to be even closer now we're going to select these and that and we're going to loop we're going to chamfer 0 0.001 meshing with one And here is the core atlatl. It's about to get its spear. Collapse all. Cylinder again. No. We're actually putting it into the atlatl because we want it to <coughs> deal with that. All right, height. 
it's going to be a lot longer because when it's here you need to be able to see you know, yeah, that level back here the spear needs to be within your eyesight range so let's bring that back down a little bit more okay there now a little bit that's a little bit too much so let's make it straight up negative 25 it also needs to be 9 the reason why it's 9 segments around is so that after we've rotated it 90 degrees no correction negative 90 degrees we now have three places we can make our fins come out of after we have chamfered these loop chamfer point zero zero one accept and connect here connect twice separation of 99 okay then we're going to select here connect once and bring it back to about there we're then going to connect again and bring it out to about there then and select there and there oh wait no needs to be there and there that's where our feathers are going to come out of so we're going to extrude way too large about there and then bring it back a bit then we're going to select the end here and we're going to take care of a little bit of business here We're going to shrink it a little bit to there. We're then going to select here, connect, move it back, and then we're going to grow it until it's just barely poking through the, yeah. We want it to mostly overlap. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do, we need to select all of these lines and connect to 99, except we then need to collect, select and con connect one line there and bring it all the way back to here. And then just take a look what happens when we mesh smooth it. Okay, that is what our atlatl javelin will look like without its pointy tip. Let's delete mesh smooth. We don't need it yet. We need to make our arrow, our pointy tip. Now this will not be a bladed or forked tip. Again, that's not the type of spears that were used at atlatls. Instead, it'll be more of a needle conical tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something I have rarely done here. I'm gonna come in here and remove some of these extra things that I've made connect 
we're going to bring this down to where the arrowhead collar will be about there we're going to select these and we're going to extrude them a little bit a little normal not that much about there okay and then it's going to shrink shrink pull it out shrink okay then we're going to select those edges loop and chamfer at 0 0.001 yeah now we may smooth it twice. Actually, no, we don't. We've got to do one more thing. We need to add a reinforcement circle uh, edge loop there. There we go. Okay, now mesh smooth once, twice. Collapse all. Now, the next thing we do is we name the parts. So this will be handle, and this will be spear. And it's 9.30, just, just yeah. Select them both, file, Export selected at Lattle. Export done. And I'm going to go back to here so I can start Daz Studio. I don't like broadcasting how the programs open because some of these will have your serial number in them. Okay, now we are now going to hide the male figure and start here again. We are now going to figure setup. A lot of these tabs may not be in your version of Daz Studio off the cuff, but if you go onto the tab bar and right click add pane you've got a whole list of pages like this that you can open up on the right or the left so the same so add geometry and we go to storage 03109 3d printing home meshes new base big Patreon, axolotl, axolotl, accept, axolotl, and we move this to geometry. Now it'll show up here, name and label, axolotl 6764. The number after that, after the name axolotl, is not random. It's the number of polygons in the figure. And I'm just editing the name to remove that because I don't like it. All right, now that we only have two bones, the handle and the spear, we're going to parent the spear to the handle. Gee, that's a no-brainer. And then it's going to be ZYX as before. ZYX, ZYX, because it's going to be going, it's pointing directly at the camera when facing front. And then create. Bang. And we go back to our scene, we can see that uh, the guy's still there. But the first thing we need to do is we need to edit the bones. And the problem here for the atlatl, for the handle, handle spine, but the 
bottom needs to be here and the this needs to be up some and actually for the sake of posing we need to move it closer to the center of the hand or where the hand will be align right, we're not going to align the node now the spear also needs to come needs to move it needs to move to about here so that when it bends it stays mostly within the uh, the dip so to speak okay now that's that's all we need to do for the bones what we need to do next is the those so what we're going to do geometry selection select all weight editing filled by bone selection groups and that's all we need to do because there's no bending no blurring on this one because it's a mechanical connection okay now we're going to edit figure memorize memorize figure rigging edit figure memorize memorize figure I'm going to go to the content library but before we do we need to make him visible select that hand right there and we're going to parent the handle well no we're, not. we're going to parent the lateral to the right hand so that way he can you know pose his hand with the atlatl we're going to worry about the posing of the atlatl in just a second but first back view and we can see that we need to move it up to about there he can grip the atlatl when it comes posing time we also now need to take this parameters twist uh, negative 45 degrees so that holding it like this it'll be right across the hand instead of out here or out here you don't throw it like this you throw it like that and now we're going to select the atlatl file save as support asset figure and prop assets and under props racial this will be we're not going to put under props racial we're going to just put under props and we're going to call it simply atlatl once again product name exclamation point miniatures parenting data smart parenting that's important and then accept we go back to our content library and to our props directory you see there's not a lot now if i use the uh, right hand correct in for the most part it's pretty good i'll need to tweak it a little bit but yeah and then we take this we select the spear we go to parameters and we bend out and you can see it's in that's how it would look in mid throw and then negative 90 is how it would look near the end you really don't want to go beyond that simply because it'll start to no longer be connected to the handle and from the point of view of a miniature that's a bad thing you really want to try and stick to like here that's how people are used to seeing it but the atlatl is ready and it's almost and it's just now 940 yeah there's no way i could have gotten an entire figure of an axolotl with an atlatl done tonight so I'm going to go ahead and pop back here. Now, I showed this earlier in the evening, but no one was in here. Okay. And um, basically, um, one of our friendly local gaming stores, FLGS, one that uh, Patrick is, well, Carlton, you've been waiting 
for the actual work to be done, haven't you? Fuzzball. He's been waiting for this. I just know it. Haven't you? Uh, what are you doing, Shinju? Okay, you're going to go get food. Okay. <sighs> Carlton? Yes, I know. What? Okay, I'm putting you on the floor. Now, like I was trying to say, our friendly local gaming store is having a painting contest. And the basic plan is, you sign up, they have a jar with a slip of paper with numbers on them. You reach in, pull out a piece of paper, see what the number is, and that's actually the product number of the Reaper miniature that you got. And you have until, what is it, December 13th or December 14th to paint it? I got the Dracolisk. That's a dragon basilisk hybrid. I haven't seen it since second edition. So I don't even know if it's a thing in D&D anymore. But this is the body of my Dracolisk. Notice it has room for two more legs and both wings, plus a nicely toothy grin. It has the famous Julie Guthrie underbite and scale pattern. I say this because, yes, this was sculpted by Julie Guthrie. Well, I have finished... A basic swampy area base that's as yet unpainted, unprepared, but the, but constructed with the depression made from a photograph of the bottom. It fits just so perfectly in. I mean, yay! And yet. It's not stuck in there. It's just, just perfect fit. And to go with it, I've turned several figures, or not several, but a few, into broken statues. You can't really see it on this clear resin, but it's got fracture lines and crap. This is not Carlton, this is Ralph. Anyway, do you mind? Your brother was just here. Anyway, the plan is to paint the statues like they're made out of granite. Not just stone, granite and have them kind of scattered around the swampy area with tufts of grass and liberal use of Sterling Battlemire, you know. Oh yeah. And of course, occasional use of, of gravel and ballast to represent gravel. Ralph? Ralph, hey, little buddy, quit staring at my hands. Quit staring at my hands. What are you doing? You probably can't tell, but he's purring up a storm. Do you mind? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna lean forward. 
crazy cat? It, no. Anyway, I'm going to lean forward. It is now 9.46 in Memphis. So. He has left the, the back of the chair completely. And is on me now. Army 80. I bet you didn't know some pirates had cats now, did ya? <sighs> anyway, I'm going to ho go ahead and call it a, call it a night for now. I'm going to hold up my hand like this. And I'm going to count from five to one. When I get to one, I'm going to go say something goofy, deep, or pithy, and go, eh, 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 eh. When I see myself go, eh, 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 I know I've caught up to YouTube's to default lag. And I can safely shut down. So, that's going to be five, four, three, two, one. I don't think the Sword of Gryffindor could save Harry from a Dracolisk. Crazy.